of the reality that the demand is high for our first to begin because there's no high rate for it. So let me push you on that also, because I completely agree with you. If we were to create these programs to reduce stigma and then we increase, uh, so now hundreds of thousands of more people are seeking care, is that a good thing or a bad thing? In today's society, like right now, if you created a program somehow that got 100,000 people to go seek out a psychologist, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's a bad thing. thing. Yeah. Um, and it's a very bad thing at this point. Um, and that reason is because of the fact that there are not enough providers, both psychiatrists, clinical therapists, LCADCs, CBADCs, addictions counselor, everything. There are not enough to take care of what is needed today. So in the next five to 10 years, um, there will be one person, um, one counselor to every six people in need, um, which is a huge, huge, huge percentage. So there's not enough people in the actual workforce in the counseling field or in the mental health field to provide the care and access that they need. Yeah, I gotta push back against Amanda, Amanda who's absolutely right. Maybe this is what we need to create the change. If we get 100,000 people knocking on therapist stores or government stores saying we need help, maybe that's going to be the final straw that creates a change. But in the meantime, you know, these are things that we have to weigh, and these are things as mental health professionals, mental health people, passionate people, change makers, these are questions you guys are going to face. You know, you're going to say, we need to break down the signal, we need everyone to seek care. And someone's going to say to you, great, fantastic, what happens when you do that? And there's not enough people out there. So now you've broken down these barriers, you've gotten people to reach out for care, and now they're not getting it. So we need to start preparing and so we can start thinking critically of what you say to that. You're saying that could be achieved through policy changes and incentives for people to the industry. Great. And I also want to say not only like I guess the number of physicians or professionals that work in that field is a problem, but also Quality um, so they're providing because just from yesterday, when we were from service from um, my peers, they were often like misdiagnosis or something like that. They caused a lot of, lot of problems, more problems than that. had before, I think. Um, yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite things to say is uh, people spend more time choosing a car than choosing a therapist. Like, you get a therapist and you say, All right, I'm going to stay here. And like, a lot of times, that's not the right therapist for you. A lot of times, you know, you need to go to three, four, five, six therapists until you find the right one. So you need to test drive three, four, five cars until you find the one that works for you. And again, by, by encouraging people to seek help, we're not increasing the number of people that need help. But those numbers are staying the same. But what we're doing by doing that would be increasing the demand. And just in the way that the world kind of works, supply and demand, when you increase the demand, supply will follow. Um, so yes, immediately that might be a problem with a shortage of healthcare providers. But I think in the long run, with people saying, look, this is something that we need, rather than some of the people being like, hey, this is something that we like, there's a much more likely outcome for So let me ask you a very provocative question now. And this is really putting you on the spot, so I apologize, and maybe someone will help you out. Um, I think you said a really important point that the amount of people who need help are staying the same but the amount of people who are reaching out maybe is more. And that's creating, I'm putting, made a quotation out, an illusion of a mental health crisis, mental health epidemic. So do you guys believe there's a mental health epidemic, mental health crisis right now, if the same amount of people are struggling, but it's more people reaching out now? And there is no right answer, by the way. I just want to ask a provocative question. Do you guys believe there's currently a mental health crisis going on right now? I would say no. Well, I guess like, I guess I would say like yes and no because no because and like it's just that people are more aware now and like just looking at like my family in the past like my grandmother it like experienced the same things that like my mom and I experienced but she didn't think that was a you know that was just stress or like a day to day thing which which it is but like. It's just that like it's diagnosable now, or like there's a label for it now, so it seems like it's bigger. But also, I think certain like societal standards have increased, 
I don't know. I guess that's tricky, but I, I would say I guess no, because everyone has experienced it in the past. It was just not Good. a real thing. I'll bring it back to you fast if you have a question. Um, I would say that on Devon, there is a crisis right now. Mm -hmm. Um, just when you look at it, there's only 50% of people that need help that are receiving it. Yeah. Um, suicide is the second leading cause of death. It's shown until yesterday, between people between, what is it, 12 and 24? Yeah. All right, 90% of youth that commit suicide have a mental health condition. All right, it's, the, the numbers don't lie. It's very obvious that there is something very serious going on. Mm -hmm. And we can't really stop denying that besides that. Great. Great. Okay. And you want to say something? I was going to say, as long as there's a number of people Slower than a number of people. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say that as long as there's like a number of people who are reaching out for help, and that's lower than like the number of people who actually need help, there's mm -hmm. still going to be an epidemic. And until we can get that number to like slowly equalize, that as many people who actually have a mental health issue are reaching out, and the epidemic is slowly starting to like. Yeah, that's great. Great. Anybody else? I think in epidemiology, the idea is that um, when there are people who are suffering from mental health diseases, numbers like um, increase is because a label is put to something and a label is put to an issue and so it does increase the numbers and it does seem like more apparent but that never stopped the fact that that disease existed in the first place it's just now it has a name so i guess with the same if you just apply biology to the same thing with mental health because it is in the same field um i guess the issue is always that and so the crisis does exist and the crisis will continue to exist and i think just because society sees them more doesn't mean I just want to hear one more thought on this. Anybody? Yeah. Because I think there are some things that are happening currently that are different from the social experiences of people in mass and people's like expectation of perfection. I think social media really plays into that because people are able to present sort of their best lives. Um, so I think that, I don't know that I'd call it the fundamental health crisis, but I do think that sort of the error of it so a lot of people say that social media is one of the causes for this recent increase in uh, mental challenges. Does anybody want to venture some other uh, thoughts or assumptions as to what is causing this increase right now? Well, I know you guys have a lot of opinions on this. Um, I mean, I'm, this is kind of going back to the initial question about yeah. the barrier. Um, I think also, like, I think relates to this immediate question, but I think that like there's like this focus on like individuals like really like creating their own mental health, and I think that kind of like takes away like attention from like creating communities that are also like very like focused on caring for each other, and like uh, I don't know, it kind of goes like pushed against like self care in terms of like creating optimal mental health, but like how can we create communities that are mentally healthy um, and create like environments so that people can like achieve their optimal mental health rather than just like access, like, care when they're in crisis or when they need it. Great. Anybody else? I think it's also certain indirect things, uh, not only social media, but things like economic crisis, um, the pressure of teenagers to go to college, the pressure of parents of paying uh, for education, uh, certain things like that. It's a lot more difficult. Absolutely. Anybody else? Um, next. Just the diversity in our country and how that's now more prevalent to all of us, just realizing that we are all very different and unique and coming from different cultures who also don't understand <coughs> mental health or they don't talk about it, that sort of thing. That's one of the factors definitely for sure. Okay.
so that is one thing that I believe is a very large uh, barrier is language in itself. So 